Dun, dun, dun. Day uh, 24, I think, is, a, is the, uh, my last count. I've worked a lot lately. Uh, haven't, I haven't worked on the truck, but really haven't been documenting it too much. But today's kind of a big day. I'm going to try to get a bunch of things done. I'm working on trying to eliminate the exhaust well, gas recycling system out of this truck. That would basically be... So, far. so see, there's a, my wrench is connected onto a little fitting, and that braided line is a hose that goes over and provides exhaust gas, heated exhaust gas, for two purposes. One is to warm up the carburetor, and the other is to basically pump exhaust gas into the engine. Reduces emissions, supposedly helps also warm up the engine better. The man of like, yeah, blah, 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 blah. It leaks. It's a piece of shit. It doesn't do anything. It's been messing with my choke uh, and all sorts of stuff. So the process right now is to take it off. But boy, this is an interesting task to do. I just got to basically take this thing off. But the wrench is an odd size. So anyways, I'm making it happen right now. I don't have a whole lot of clearance with this uh, circulation hose here, which is another thing I, I plan on eliminating in the next day or two. Uh, but yeah, this is one's going bye-bye now. Get rid of this, and hopefully we can get uh, the choke working better on this thing. So, day 24. Now we're on the other side of the car. So the stove pipe comes around behind in the back of the engine here, and it comes up underneath this mounting bracket here. On top of that mounting bracket, sits this. This is the actual EGR valve. This is the one that takes the, uh, the vacuum message from over there and tells it to open and close to allow exhaust gases from one side to come up and in and go into the engine. But look at this shit. Look at this. Look at this oil. This is how bad these systems are. And actually what I found from my research is people say these systems are just are just terrible. That you can fix them, you can get them working again, but chances are the amount of time you'd spend on the parts and all the tweaking is not worth it. And I mean, this is supposed to be a... a <laughs> look at that. Look at this one. Yeah! Look at all of this oil caked in here. This is from... Just, just, yeah, look at that. So can you imagine this thing working at all? And, and that's not, it's not doing a damn thing. So this is the hole that the exhaust gas is supposed to come from the car, from the exhaust side. Comes in through the valve, it's supposed to go back in here, and then do 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 and comes in below this. That heat, heated gas is supposed to heat up the carburetor, heat up the manifold to help the car run better. Sure, does that a little bit. Uh, I'm tempted to take this off here and dismount it, you know, take it off from this whole entire bracket, remove it from here, but I think it's going to be a little bit more than I want to do. Because um, I can't reach the underside of this bracket here very well. So, my plan is, at least for right now, is to close it up over here. I'm going to get an aluminum can. And I'm going to make my own gasket that plugs this hole up. Both, well, it doesn't matter the other side since it's closed up on the other side. Uh, but just basically block this off so that there's no more of this gas coming in here. Um, I do need to obviously take care of this because this used to connect to it. This is the system that draws the power and everything. All this pretty much is going to go bye-bye. All this... This amplifier, the vacuum amplifier, the solenoid, all that stuff goes bye-bye because it does nothing for this engine. The only thing right now that's uh, necessary is this here, this vacuum tube coming out of the manifold for here. This is the adjuster for the drawdown, as it's called. It comes over here to the drawdown. And, uh, and, of course, there's the vacuum advance, which comes from the carburetor itself so that's all it needs everything on that side is all going to come off and get plugged up and it should be fine 
So, wow, a lot of crazy work here, folks. A lot of crazy work. Having fun. Day 24, I think. Okay, so this is day 24 again. This is the bottom of the PCV valve. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making a plate to block this valve off to prevent the whole air from getting sucked in since the soap pipe is no longer working. How am I going to do that? PBR gasket, bitches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually going to cut out a piece of the plastic can to fit this. To completely cover this over, I'll use some RT to, on both sides to give it a good gasket, put it back on, bolt it in place. Then we won't have an escape route for the air, so less whistling. Yay! So I have made a little aluminum foil and duct tape gasket. I couldn't find my RT, so I figured, well, duct tape's going to work. So this is going to go in this place. We'll put the uh, uh, the actual valve over the top of it to bolt it into place and uh, close up some vacuum lines and see what trouble we've caused. So uh, we'll see what's next. So this is a continuation of day 24. I've gotten everything done underneath the hood. Now I just really need to figure out why I don't have turn indicators. And I think it's this sucker right here. Um... The square one is the hazard. This one is the hazard one. The round one, I believe, to be the turn indicator one. But I won't really know because I can't pull it out. This is one of these weird gear changes that some of these models didn't have this. And as you can see, this, this little bracket that it's put in here with, it's kind of odd. It looks really like an afterthought so i'm gonna have to dig that thing out real quick and uh, see what happens isn't that crazy though mm. okay see well i've disconnected and, and I, I think i've noticed one small problem i see a socket with one two three prongs and only one two cables coming out of it question is where is the third one ah yes the world may never know so yeah geez louise <sighs> okay but it only has two prongs so i don't know what the story is here i really am not sure what's going on here why would you attach something with a three prong connector Right, three prong connector, two prong switcher, and I'm confused. So yeah, let's uh, let's go inside and find out what the hell this thing is to begin with, and find out what we get next. Um, let's see. Just so I have for reference here, I have two wires. One is. I think it's all green. Hard to tell. Let me see if I can get any better view here. There's some light on that thing. Light on that son of a big hand. All right. So one is green. The other one is green with a yellow stripe. And that green actually might be dark blue boy she's old wiring again issues of old wiring uh this one right here all right figured out i have to just rewire the whole goddamn thing <laughs> all right day 24 this is one of the last projects i'm trying to get done today uh it is the turn signal flasher uh, I, my turn indicators don't work. A lot of hand signals, not a big deal. A little cold this time of the year to be doing hand signals, though. So, um, yeah, this car is an unusual one, one of those changeover models where it has two flasher mechanisms. There's one flasher, this one, for the turn indicators, and there's another one of these just for the um, emergency flashers, turn signal flasher. So anyways... Didn't know this. This was very well hidden, actually. And being a transition year, this is uh, the last of the cars that had this. 
I was able to find this actually way up underneath the steering wheel column and uh, pull it out and I can tell you um, it's a Japanese, probably original to the car. I'm sure there's a way I could read the date on that one. But uh, anyways, uh, I pried it open and sure enough, it's in bad shape. Uh, the contacts are fried. Um, there's some um, some stuff coming out of it, but uh, so basically it's fried. It has a the flash mechanism has a kind of a a heat sink in the bottom that acts as like a ground, and that's what's all fried out in there. So that's why it's been actually going to ground as soon as you plug it in. So it just it stays on this ground. So anyways, um, $13, not too bad. So I just need to order it, put it in, and drive with warm hands. Woohoo!